remember that it is already a battleground remember that krishn himself has tried the utmost to avert war he himself had gone as a messenger to the court of duryodhan and tried his best now all that is behind before war the right action is please try to prevent war war means a lot of suffering on the battlefield now you cannot act like a peacenik now you have to be an eagle not a dove now you must fight a thousand times did i my guru ask what is the name of the one who can't be named and asking again and again i tired myself out how has something come out of nothing communication between the knower and his audience is always a little difficult first of all the knower if he is a knower at all knows fully well that he cannot communicate the essence of he want of what he wants to say through words so he has no great interest in speaking and even lesser interest in speaking a lot he knows well that even if in his compassion he does keep talking it would be like circling around the center like beating about the bush trying to point at something indirectly his trust in words is long gone he has seen how words fail he has seen how once he had prided himself on his dexterity with words and how time proved to him the futility of all his verbal skills so he places no more 
emphasis on trusts. He knows on words. He knows that words are not really a reliable or an effective vehicle. The verses of the Upanishads are so pithy. One of the major Upanishads, Ishavasa. is hardly two standard sites of printed pages. And if you look at the Brahma Sutras, sometimes there are three words Sometimes even just one. The knower does not trust words, so is not greatly inclined to talk on the subject of truth. On other matters, if the situation so arises and if he is in a mood, maybe he can and he would talk a lot. But he knows that one cannot speak of truth. One would just keep speaking about truth. So he doesn't want. You look at Lalla's verses. So frail. like the ascetic, so unpretentious like the monk, so naked like Lalla herself, such sparse use of language. using words as sparingly as she can. The second reason why communication is difficult has to do with the listener. The listener always lives with pre-assigned meanings to words. Every word is a certain image and the image belongs to the world of the listener. So whatever would be said to you, you would convert it to an image, an image of your old pre-existing world, which means that the new cannot be communicated through words. Even if the new comes through words, you will decipher it as something old. But 
in spite of these two seemingly insurmountable obstacles, words have been uttered. And it has appeared that words have been useful as well. To those who feel this way, I would say that if you have ever come to a certain peace in the company of a man, sitting in front of a teacher, kindly do not think that it is due to the words of the teacher. It is only coincidental that the teacher happened to be speaking. The peace was not due to the words. Peace can have no reason. It is a priori. Whatever is really important and essential cannot come through something. But we often say that, sir, listening to your words or reading you brings me a certain calmness. You are mistaken. If the calmness is coming due to something, it is just another mental image. You have pre-decided that when somebody who looks and talks wise would speak to you, in a certain way, then you would experience a certain state of mind that you would label as calmness. That is no calmness. And the fate of that calmness is that it would disappear as soon as the speaking stops. Is that not what happens with most of us? So we say that we are experiencing a light mind and very soon the light mind disappears. The claim that a lightness is being experienced right now goes hand in hand with the claim that words are the source of that lightness. It is already an arrogant claim. It is already a claim that you have found the genesis of peace, the root of truth. The reason of liberation 
and when you have this great a fixation to words then you listen to the teacher only when he is uttering the so called holy words you may pay great attention when the teacher is in the teaching mode the holy mode and you would stop paying attention when the teacher is otherwise around you you might be sitting eating walking with him in the normal course of life but you would fail to accord him the attention the respect the total being that he deserves deserves not sporadically not intermittently not occasionally but always being a teacher is not a role play that one performs upon a podium one is not a teacher only when he is on the stage and the lights are all set upon him one does not cease being a teacher but because one wants to keep a lot of importance to words so for us a teacher is a teacher only when he is uttering words yet words have been spoken it is a very peculiar a paradoxical situation you must understand this words will have to be spoken because we have come in our own eyes a little far from the internal silence silence has surprisingly become a stranger to us we are more familiar with noise including the noise of holy words so words will be needed because words is what we are words is what we have started thinking ourselves to be and at the same time look at the paradox words will be needed and at the same time you will have to continuously remember that it is not the words that are going to help you that whatever 
the teacher might be saying he is saying it in full realization of it not being that which must be communicated words always miss the mark they never hit the center right what will hit the center how at all would you benefit that you must not ask that you need not wonder about A thousand times did I, my guru, ask, "What is the name of the one who can't be named?" It is a conversation, a dialogue between the student and the teacher. the student is lalla the mind lalla the woman lalla the name the teacher is lalla the formless lalla the unthinkable lalla the nameless lalla the atman that is essentially what is happening lalla the mind is beseeching lalla the pure self but of course when the mind and the self are in passionate loving conversation with each other there can be no recording and no words because the one who could record and memorize and say is simply too occupied too immersed to record or say or tell to others i am in a passionate embrace i am not going to remember to get a photograph clicked at this moment that will make the whole thing so cheap so really of the essential there can be no description because the one who would describe is really too 
occupied, too immersed to describe. Yet we do have a description in front of us. Then for us, who are so dumb, that we need descriptions, it is a dialogue between a student and a teacher. Lalla, the young woman and her guru. What is Lalla doing? What is the mind doing? She says, a thousand times I asked. A thousand times I asked. That is the only task of the student, of the mind. It is always asking. It is always pleading. It is always demanding an answer. Whatever be the activity of the mind, the activity is just an answer-seeking activity. What is an answer? An answer is something that brings you to contentment, which takes away the thorn in your flesh that the question is. Asking a question is asking for peace. That is what the mind is always doing. That is why Allah says, a thousand times I asked. She is continuously asking, doing nothing else but asking. Asking, asking, asking. The only difference between the mind of a lalla and the mind of the so-called ordinary man is that lalla knows whom to ask. You too ask, but you ask those who are just as ignorant as you are. You too seek the same peace that Lalla seeks. But you seek it at all the wrong places. Lalla's destiny is your destiny. Lalla's desire is your desire. Lalla's question is your question. Are you really other than Lalla? No, you are not. Just a small difference, a slight mistake. But that small mistake creates all the difference in your life. Lalla asks the Guru, you ask the world. Lalla asks relentlessly, ceaselessly. You ask only when you experience pain. Lalla is very careful.
about not engaging with the false ones and you are so obsessed with falseness that you have made the false world itself your guru Lalla got hurt Lalla the teenager Lalla the young woman got terribly hurt got married with early had an unhappy marriage the in laws had certain beliefs which they tried to impose upon her the husband did not approve of her mystical ways they wanted her to adjust compromise and become just like them and we all experience the same hurt a similar situation don't we but once it becomes clear to lalla that she is at the wrong place that she has made a mistake she acknowledges the mistake she may not be very sure about what see she is seeking but she is absolutely clear about what cannot be tolerated what cannot be accepted she leaves the family and leaving the family of the husband she does not go back to the family of her father she does not want to repeat the same mistake it is not one home that has disappointed her she has now known the nature of all homes she cannot move from one home to another she will not try to console herself with superficial changes and she was young in her early 20s
a young woman in Kashmir. Folklore says a beautiful woman at that, leaving her in-law's place and going to an ascetic. and asking to be accepted as a student, rare. The hurt is common. The departure is so rare. So, again we have a paradox and the whole field of spirituality is only for those who are comfortable with paradoxes. While we are so one with Lalla, Lalla is so very different from us in some way. The hurt she experiences, the betrayal, the disappointment, is a shared betrayal, a shared disappointment. There is nobody here whose wounds are any different from Lalla's wounds. But there is hardly anybody here who is determined to not to be wounded again. When one door closes on us, we go and start knocking at the next. When one relationship disappoints us, we become eager for the next one. When one corner of the world hurts us, we try to find solace in another corner, one job to the next job, one house to the next house, one thought to the next thought. Lalla says no. There is a certain obstinacy about her. Whether it is about coming to the Guru or ceaselessly trailing the Guru. A thousand times she asks, keeps asking. Not for nothing has she come to the Guru. She has not come to the Guru to strike a personal relationship with him. The personal, she has left far behind. She has come to him as one in his thirst, comes to the well. One does not stand and admire the well. One does not entertain himself with naming the well. One does not start painting and decorating the well. One straight away starts drinking. That is the purpose and the destiny of your thirst. To bring you to the well and then get dissolved in the well. So 
she is asking tell me tell me tell me and she won't stop she won't stop there is no limit to her patience the question that she is asking is an impossible question she is asking what is the name of the one who cannot be named and the guru loves it guru the tired and bored of disciples who ask them questions that have an answer when you are asking a question that can be answered you are only making the guru work needlessly he is saying ha ah, more effort more words more shooting into the dark more beating about the bush if you are ignorant you would feel happy when the guru gives you a reply and if wisdom has touched you a little you will rejoice the day guru gives you no answer for now that which needs to be communicated is too subtle to be said through coarse words it is a very strange situation looks almost insane the student is asking a question which cannot be answered the guru is obviously not answering but the guru at the same time is not barring her from asking either your common sense would say that if the question is so impossible paradoxical even nonsensical then why does the guru not simply send her away or close the matter with a terse reply the guru does not he is celebrating he is showering blessings upon the student such a student is the guru's celebration he is not replying in words he is not doing or saying anything to her which will console her and thereby end the query his silence is a stoking of lulla's internal fire his silence is an invitation to lulla to keep asking sing keep asking i won't reply but you keep asking he 
you would wonder if that is so then why doesn't he say so much in words he could have said allah of such questions there are hardly any answers but like a mantra keep repeating the question this is exactly why the guru would not give such an advice because then lalla's repeated questioning would become just the chanting of a stale mantra when somebody like lalla asks who am i the question is arising from her very being it has an authenticity about it it is coming from her life she really really wants to know but when a usual spiritual practitioner asks the question who am i it is a fake a false question because this question has nothing to do with your life it has not arisen from within you it has entered you from the outside you have read somewhere that it is spiritual spiritually fashionable to ask who am i so you use that unfortunate phrase and exploit it whenever and wherever you can when the last the question rings of genuineness and then the guru doesn't answer it's a strange thing all the false questions the guru answers to all the fraudsters the guru replies and to the one genuine disciple the guru does not even say yes or no he may not even bother to smile it may appear that he is totally ignoring the question and the questioner but then spirituality is not for those who cannot live with contradictions what you think of as absent is present what you think of as real is so unreal and if you insist on calling the real as real and unreal as unreal then why waste your time in mysticism go and buy a new house a new real house yes spirituality is for those who know that what looks like a roof may not be a roof what is is not what is bad may be so good spirituality is for those who know that if you are listening very carefully
then you are so disrespectful. And if you are really devoted to the Guru, then the occasion of his speech would be no special occasion. Lala's internal Guru, the Self, the Atman, that takes innumerable forms, is her driver. Her internal Guru, the internal driver, brings her to the right form, the right man. So we are entering After two lines, the second half of the verse, oh it is just four lines. What would happen after the interval? Would the Guru come up with a wise reply? Would Lalla gain enlightenment? Would special knowledge, divine blessings come to her mind? Yes. Oh, you are so knowledgeable. You have already read. That's what knowledge does to you. Now you cannot listen. Spirituality is for those who know when the Guru is joking when obeying his verbal command would be disobedience. People come to me and most who come are so set in their particular ways of life that it is very difficult for them to be dislodged. They have made rigid decisions. Even when they talk to me, they are talking just to get a stamp of approval. So they come, they narrate their stories which allow me to take a little bit of sleep and after 30 minutes of narration when their stories end and I wake up they ask for my advice I say do what you want to do they say, no, this is what we have now thought of. What do you think of my plan? I say, wonderful. You surely deserve this plan. They do not even realize that the statement is 
is a double meaning statement. Yes, of course, please proceed. Sir, for next one month, I would be busy with my professional commitments, so I would not be doing any reading. So wanted to take your blessings. Oh, of course. You are always blessed. Surely you must fulfill your commitments, professional ones. Go ahead. Now this is dangerous. When the Guru is not speaking, he is exhorting you to speak. And when he is speaking, he is fooling you. That is the most that the real Guru can have with you. Have fun. What do you think? You will learn through his words. What do you think? He will talk to you in your preferred language. Language made by you, constructed by you, interpreted by you. In your language, he will only give you something that, well, you deserve. Silence is defiance. Now you are being given something that you don't really deserve, that is beyond you. Now you are being defied, violated, stretched, dissolved, actually killed. Intermission is over. The second half begins. Is Lalla going to get an answer? Let's see. And asking again and again, I tired myself out. And asking again and again, I tired myself out. That is what the real Guru does. His presence brings you to a point where you can see the futility of all your pursuits. Spiritual attainment is nothing except this tiring out. You get so fatigued that you die. The Guru task is to help you see that you are already very tired. 
his job is to arouse that sensitivity within you which enables you to see that you are already ready he gives you nothing he does not mold you or prepare you or create you or bring you up because everybody irrespective of where he or she is irrespective of his age experiences position and situation in life is always ready you are so tired you are always at the climax of your effort and consequent suffering wherever you are it is the climax whenever you will look at yourself you will find that you are already ready and when you see that you are already ready then there is no further delay then time is not needed then there is just the jump and the flight and the freedom and the bliss then the guru will not help you you need no help nobody needs any help all of us are exactly at the point at which the flight can begin nobody needs to be taken anywhere else nobody needs to undergo a transformation nobody needs to be given precious words of wisdom nobody needs to be shown the light wherever you are you are crying for the same element that lalla was crying for the repeated questioning the seeking just reveals to lalla that she has been seeking since ages is that not what you have always been doing the guru asks in his silence Allah, right now your question is so purely expressed but even otherwise whether it is in the market whether it is in the kitchen or on the roads or in the father's protection or in the husband's embrace have you not continuously been seeking this only lalla you are dead tired lalla 
please pass away lella your time to go and the guru says all of this without saying and if the guru is a real guru he would always be saying something without saying if he seems like speaking if he appears to be giving you some words then rest assured that in reality he is giving you something beyond words we had begun by saying do not take words seriously even the words of the guru the words of the guru will become a barrier between you and the guru even when the guru is saying something to you remember that he means something else he never means what words seem to convey for words are so limited the guru wants to give you the infinite how will he give it through words so surely you must not judge the intent of the guru through the words of the guru when he is silent he is saying something when he appears to be saying something he is actually saying something totally different and lilla acknowledges her terrible tiredness how long will i wander how long will i keep calling and asking and lalla stops a total stopping a complete cessation but we had just said that spirituality is so very paradoxical the lalla who stops becomes a wandering mystic the lalla who was wandering was confined to a house apparently not moving anywhere and the lalla who has really stopped is now moving about totally freely free even of the last vestiges of social accompaniment she gives up the clothes as well when you have totally stopped then you start dancing oh wonderful just for the pleasure of hearing these words my own personal pleasure i would want to repeat them when you have really stopped you start dancing so lovely so beautiful isn't it
when you have really come under your own shelter then you give up clothes giving up clothing is not to be taken as a fact to be analyzed for about Allah's life we are not sure of the facts the first written records come centuries after her physical death she may have given up clothes totally she might have given up clothes on certain occasions but the gist of the matter is that she totally gave up what clothes stand for she may or may not have given up clothing but she totally gave up that which clothes represent and when you give up that which clothes represent not only do you give up the clothes that you wear upon yourself you also give up all that you wear what do you wear what do you think you wear only clothes even when you are clothless are you ever naked i am yet to see a naked being in my life i have seen many without clothes but i have never seen anybody naked they are always wearing wearing something and if they are not wearing anything else then they are wearing the body that is one layer of clothing that they never give up even little kids who appear so innocent so naked even they have the last layer of clothing upon themselves well secured Allah becomes totally naked she gave up gives up all that she used to wear that the common man wears but because we are material obsessed beings because our eyes see only the grass so we do not see in totality all that lalla gave up all that she stopped wearing she stopped wearing her concepts her beliefs the maze of relationships the fake personas we do not see that all that too has been given up but we are very quick to see that the young woman is not wearing clothes anymore that we are quick 
to figure out remember and turn into a legend do not remember lalla as somebody who gave up clothes please remember lalla as the one who became totally naked and there is a great difference between these two statements anybody can give up clothes the sexually active man or woman becomes clothesless practically every day sometimes many times every day but giving up clothes means nothing wearing clothes too means nothing becoming naked is something totally different when you meet your lover do not see whether he or she can drop his clothes in front of you see whether your lover can go actually naked with you few are such lovers few are such beings who can ever go naked lalla is the naked one lalla is pure self tatman that is the true meaning of nakedness to drop all the layers all the coverings that surround you that obfuscate your real nature and asking again and again i tired myself out how has something come out of nothing you can only get tired while seeking that which you really want getting that is beyond your personal capacity and when you are left with no energy and you have drained out every bit of yourself in honest inquiry when roaming and roaming wandering and wandering you drop dead that is when you are picked up that is when that magic happens which makes the dead one dance if the whole story could be captured on a script 
the story would include hundreds of pages that describe the wandering the torment the disappointment the hurts the losses at the end of these pages would be total disappointment total exhaustion total surrender and at this point the reader of these pages would feel as if the story has ended in defeat after this point there are a few blank pages that contain nothing something might have happened but what happened is not there in the memory the mind was not there to capture the happening the mind remembers till the point lalla drops down and after that the mind doesn't remember all that the mind remembers is an absence of its normal states so even if it remembers all it remembers is a blankness that blankness is represented by the blank pages so page 1 to 100 vivid description next four pages blank the reader is left guessing what happened what happened and then an infinite number of pages just full of dance dance it all appears so much like a fairy tale except for the blank pages the blank pages tease you so much if only you could know what was it that happened if only you could know how the defeated one the deflated one the disappointed one suddenly came to life and came to immortal life and got so full of verve and energy that her life became a total dance then you would like to emulate the whole process in your own life but your wish cannot be granted the blank pages will remain blank and that is mysticism that is life you will never know what happens you will never know what touched lalla and how you can at best see a relentless pursuit and then 
her delivered self but what lies between the struggling ego the struggling child and the child happy joyous miraculously laughing that you will never be able to know the verse ends abruptly it does not even say or claim that lalla got her answers all it says is that the first part of the script of the story has ended and that ending is sufficient because that can end only when that emptiness that blankness those blank pages have arrived so the first part can end only when that pure cleanliness has arrived indicating that lalla grew tired is enough the blank pages have arrived and if the blank pages have arrived then for sure the dance too has arrived now why waste paper and ink by mentioning all that the reader has to be wise enough to gather the hint and that is the hint let the first part of the story end that is all that you need that is all that you can do the blankness comes on its own on its own and post the blankness what happens just happens it's a continuous celebration but the first part must first end you are trapped in the first part dear ones all of us are trapped in the first part of the story we are not allowing it to end blankness scares us we say at least now the pages are getting filled at least now there is a story after this there would be just empty sheets and who knows how many empty sheets for how long and there is no guarantee of the script that would be written after the empty sheets so even if mine is a terrible story i want the story to continue to drag on like somebody dragging his hurt and wounded feet and creating a messy a terrible trail of stains of blood marks that is our story just as this verse ends without any expectation and without any description of what happens subsequently similarly end your story do not see what this verse says see what this verse does that is the way to be with the guru
see how it is being said to you that ending will be sufficient you do not need a new story the new comes on its own all you need is a termination of the old one and asking again and again i tired myself out when will you tire out when and you are already so tired aren't you